Meristeel! Wait, 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 what? We, uh, here at the studio couldn't be a new opening. Just for this. Mm hmm Well, okay. In the great city of Manhattan, during the Great Depression, only one brave newspaper stood out to give out hope, justice, and the American way for all the people. This was the great metropolitan newspaper, The Daily Planet. Maristeel by Iowa Forever, Chapter One. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> the sun had been set some time ago. Down in the town of Ponyville, some of the populace had turned in for the night. While quite a few more had stayed out late for one of the special times of the year, the annual meteor shower that graced Luna's night, her gift to the ponies that she and her sister ruled. Rainbow Dash fluttered her wings a little, just enough to keep herself loose. Sitting still for prolonged periods of time was not really her thing, so slight hesitation helped to keep her calm. She looked up at the night sky, then back there again her friends, trying to draw some kind of reaction from, well, anything really. Hey, Twat! How much longer until the shower starts? She yes, subconsciously so kicking a small rock down the hill they were seeing on. Just a few more minutes, Rainbow, Tony Sparkle said. The unicorn having set up a large telescope to observe the shower. I don't remember you ever being this impatient about a meteor shower before. Last time we got here, just before the meteor shower started. But we've been sitting here for two hours! I'm starting to get all twitchy. No point you ever said you had to sit still for two hours. You could have gone for a quick flight any time you wanted. Rainbow blinked for a second and looked away. Okay. Maybe sitting here with you guys is a little more important right now. But still, this is boring! Don't you have a book or something that has activities for times of this? Um, well, I did. But Pinky accidentally set it on fire when we went on that camping trip last month. Rainbow Dash chuckled a little. She had not actually been there. But Twilight apparently had a meltdown that made the Smarty Pants incident look like a fool's tantrum. Thinking and Applejack calmed her down, but the two Earth ponies had swore never to go camping with Twilight again. Oh, come on, Twilight! It wasn't that bad! Thinky said, popping out from behind Twilight's telescope. I only burned it a little, and now it's got that old tiny look to it! Twilight wanted to answer, but a flash of light across the sky distracted her. Look! It started! Rainbow Dance looked up as hundreds of small lights flashed through the sky. She had seen meteor showers a dozen times throughout her life. But she never got bored of them. If any pony had asked, she could just say, They're cool, and be done with it. But her admiration for many years at comets went a little deeper. When she was younger, she would imagine herself up there, racing through the sky with many years for every pony in Equestria to see. She showed off all the time nowadays, but many years were still something special to her. Something that spoke of childhood innocence and a sense of wonder she tried not to slip away. Still, she was not the point to get philosophical. She left that tie and sound to Twilight, or possibly Rarity. She was here to enjoy the show. So, Twilight, Rainbow Dash said, what's it like looking at one of those meteors for your telescope? Amazing, Twilight said, still focused on her observation. With the right calibrations, I could see the entire structural makeup of the meteors. All the pockets, the irregularities, everything. They're kind of like snowflakes in a way. I was never good at working with snow, or snowflakes for that matter. Twilight took a little, what's so funny about that? I, I don't really know. It's just snowflakes. Hey, it takes a lot of work to make a really good snowflake. I'd really like to see you try it sometime. Believe me, she has. Twilight's trying to insist that Spike said. Twilight shot Spike a glare before looking back at Rainbow Dash. Sorry, Rainbow. It's just that I expected you to try to be a perfectionist in everything weather related. But, snow seems kind of like a mundane thing to be bad at. I never said I was bad at it, it's just that I wasn't good at it. Isn't that kind of the same thing? You would think that, Twilight. Rainbow Dash has watched more than three years straight across the sky. So, what do you do with all that egghead stuff? 
I'm sorry. In case any employee ever needs any more information on me and yours. Or in case you get bored. Yes, in case I get... Twine's mouth flat a little before she returned to her stargazing. Raven Ash chuckled a little before standing up, stretching out her wings as she did so. I think I'm going to head home. Why? Does he want to stay out here longer? Any other night, I would, but we've got a big storm coming later this week, and last time I screwed up the lightning because I didn't get enough sleep. You, the pony takes three naps a day, didn't get enough sleep. Yeah, I didn't. Besides, did we all have that pony pet play date thing down at the park tomorrow? Oh, that's right. Wait, you didn't get enough sleep for that? Sometimes, and I forgot to feed Tank before I came over here. He kind of gets grousy when he doesn't eat. At least I think he does. Eh, kind of hard to tell when he doesn't move at all that fast most of the time. Maybe you should ask Fluttershy about it. I tried, but she talks about animals the same way you talk about egghead stuff. Oh, well, see you tomorrow, Rainbow. Rainbow Dash nodded and started to take flight before an orange hoof stomped her tail. Hold on, Rainbow, Applejack said, removing her hoof from Rainbow Dash's tail. Don't forget your problems when you helped with harvest and some apples before that blank storm y'all playing blows in. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. What? You think I actually let you down on something like that? Last time you came to help, you found a tree and took a nap while Big and me and Big, Big Mike and Mike did all the hard work. Okay, there was that one time, but I promise I won't ditch you guys like last time. Rainbow Dash looked at Rapplejack for a few seconds before he was released. All right, but I'm holding up to that promise. I'm going to ask me a smock salute when her right hoof took off, quickly speeding away from the hill. Her house was not very far away, but she decided to slow down and enjoy the night a little bit longer. A cool breeze came in from the south, blowing through her mane and cooling her down a bit. She spun lazily in the air for a bit before reaching her house, a two-story cloud home complete with a rainbow fountain, veranda, and massive columns. She spun in the air one more time before landing outside, Hey, Tank! I'm home! As he called as he walked into her house, Tank was waiting for her in the main hallway, the towards his little fight horse, giving him away in the darkness. Rainbow Dash walked over to Tank and kneeled to be at eye level with him. Do anything cool while I was gone? Just received only a slow blink from the reptile. Well, next time I'll take you with me. I think you'd like to see me and yours. Tank made some sort of croaking sound, while Rainbow Dash made her way to the kitchen. You know, considering one story I read that involved this man to main sex becoming a superhero, I'm worried about Tank. It was nothing much, just a stove that only worked well so he did not need it, and a fridge that was too small. Rainbow Dash opened the fridge and pulled out packets of gossy leaves. Something that Flair Sight said was good food for Tauruses. Rainbow Dash selected several bigger leaves and set up before Tank, and began methodically chew on them while Rainbow Dash made her way to her room. Still had to finish that last daring dude book I got for Twilight. She seemed kind of anxious to get it back. Her train of thought was interrupted when she entered her room. Sitting on her bed was a rock, about the size of one of her longer feathers. Rainbow Dash frowned. Tank was always bringing back rocks whenever they went down on the ground. This could have been the latest addition to his collection. She had, did not mind most of the time, but when he left them around for her to find, it started getting annoying. Tank! Did you leave one of your rocks on my bed? She asked. Tank slowly shook his head. No. He returned to eating his food. Curious. Rainbow slowly walked over to her bed. Eyes fixed on the rock. Okay. Mysterious rock shows up in my room. And it's not Tank's. How am I supposed to deal with this? So he leaned over and looked closer at the rock. It was a greenish color. It seemed to glow a little once he got close. She frowned again, trying to think if she had ever seen a rock like this before. Maybe it's a meteor, she mumbled. It was not an uncommon phenomenon. Police would find little meteors all over the place, and most would just put them up on shelves or give them to eggheads or museums. Some got them around, showed them all to friends, sometimes even made them into things. Rainbow perked up at this. My own meteor. Even Twilight doesn't have a meteor. Maybe Rarity could fit it into some kind of necklace or something so it would be easier to sell ponies. It would say something like, Coolest pony ever! And then every pony would say, Hey, Rainbow Dash is cool, but now she's got a meteor, is even cooler? Yeah, I like that. Rainbow Dash smiled and scooped the rock off her bed, looking around for a place to keep her prize somewhere until tomorrow. 
I still have that Leftovers box from the last time we ate out. That's you do. With the rock was in between her forelimbs, she began to fly towards her kitchen. Thoughts of only a me are purring in her mind. However, she did not notice that the rock had started to glow when she picked it up. At first it was only to glow. But slowly, ever so slowly, things started happening to her. She stopped flying for a moment. Rainbow Dash started to feel a bit drowsy. Her wings feeling like it was made out of lead. She tried to shake it off, but the feeling got stronger and she dropped out of the air. The rock bouncing out to one side of the hallway. A wave of nausea came over, as she had trouble focusing on the area around her. What is happening to me? The nausea reached its peak and Rainbow Dash vomited. The combination of stomach acid and half digested food splattering across the floor. She tried to get back to her room, but vomited again before tripping over her hooves, collapsing into a heap on the floor. Violent spasm shook her body, twisted the pegasus into unnatural shapes. D Tank! Raymond has called, hoping her TARS will respond. I need you to, to get help! Then there is spasm hit, casting Rainbow Dash into darkness. Hmm. That's something you don't see every day. No, I mean, seriously. Um, I really like this idea because it's kind of unique to Kryptonite. At least it doesn't make the blood boil, Smallville! Chapter 2. And I would just like to say for a first main special today, I'm wearing a Superman t-shirt while doing this. Rainbow Dash did not show up on time for the Pony Pit play date. At first, the other five thought she was just running late. It saw no reason for concern. But as time wore on and the sign Pegasus did not show up, the others got nervous. After a quick conversation on what to do, they decided to send Fluttershy up to her house to check out and see what's home. Fluttershy landed near the entrance to the cloud home, her buttery yellow hose sinking slightly into the clouds. She looked for any sign of her friend, but the house seemed empty. Um, hello. Is anybody home? There was no answer. Fluttershy started shuffling her hose. Rainbow Dash, you missed our pony play, play date. Every pony was wondering where you were. Still no answer. You still like us, don't you? I mean, of course you do, but maybe we said something. Did I say something? Because whatever I said, I'm sorry I made you mad. Uh, unless you're that mad, and maybe you're just tired or something. I could come back later if you like. There was still no answer. First, I had to think harder. Um, the wonderful stopped by my house today. They wanted to talk to you about something? First, I gave the best smiles he could, and her attempt sounded sincere. The smile slowly faded, but there was no sign of her rainbow made friend. No answer. But Rainbow Dash would never miss a chance of meeting the Wonderbolts, even if I do lie a little. First, I pawed at the clouds a little, a small wisp of vapor flowing over her face. I, I really don't want to do this, but Rainbow Dash, you're making everybody nervous by not showing up, and if you don't come here this instant, I'll. I'll. There's some kind of prank that even you will consider funny. There's a shuffling behind the door, and it slowly opened. Thank you. You had me so worried, I thought you'd... Laying the door was not Rainbow Dash, but Tank. The door is hovering at eye level with Fluttershy. The Pegasus frowned. Tank, is something wrong? Where's Rainbow Dash? The door is buzzed down the hall. Fluttershy following quietly behind him. When he stopped, Fluttershy went to where he had stopped to gasp. Rainbow Dash was lying on the ground. Her head resting in a pool of vomit. Most of the color had drained out of her coat and mane. She was breathing in red gas. Sporadic spasms would shake her body, punctuated by a house of dry heaving. Oh my goodness! Rainbow Dash, are you alright? First, I flew over to her stricken friend and turned Rainbow Dash to face her. Fl Fluttershy? Rainbow Dash said weakly. Yes, I'm here. What happened to you? Rainbow Dash coughed a few times before pointing behind Fluttershy. Rock, she said. First, I looked and saw a rock resting against the wall. She saw it glow green for a second, but she could not be sure. This rock did this you? First, I looked at Rainbow Dash for a moment to inspect the rock. She was no geologist, so she could not tell there was anything unusual about the rock. She stepped closer to pick it up when two cyan hose grabbed her leg. No! D don't touch it! Rainbow Dash tried to pull Fireside away, but she started dry heaving again and collapsed. Oh! You look awful. 
until you get to the hospital, right away. Firesay scooped up her friend and her hose and made her way towards the door. You know, I am really glad that it was Green Kryptonite that Rainbow Dash first encountered. This would be a really short story if it was Yellow Kryptonite. But a fun one if it was red. Pink would actually be interesting. So it's not essentially strong fire, but she would be able to get Rainbow Dash to the ground where somebody else could help. Please don't die, Rainbow Dash. I couldn't live with myself if you died. I have to say that this is one of the strangest cases I've ever seen. Ponyville's doctor said to the five mares in the waiting room. Is, is she going to be all right? First I asked. She's weak right now, but we have her hooked up to a couple of IVs, and she seems to be responding well. If we're lucky, we should be out of here in a day or two. Oh, thank goodness. But what's wrong with her? Twilight asked. That's where things get a little more complicated. We did a number of tests and found that there's a spike of radiation in her body. So I initially wrote it off as radiation poisoning. That's people, Frank. Well, yes. But she would have to receive a lethal dose of radiation in order for her to affect her so quickly and violently. Lethal? So is she going to die? No. Normally, she would have died right before you brought her through that door. But as I said, she's recovering much faster than any pony her age should. Thank God for Rad X. My guess is that the radiation came from some other source, and we might be dealing with something else entirely different. But she was perfectly fine last night. Maybe it was something she ate, Pinkie said. She did eat a lot of cupcakes and sandwiches last night. I don't think overeating is our culprit here. You... Five know Rainbow Dash better than I do. Has she ever had any trouble with substance abuse or drinking? Well, she does drink, but only on special occasions. That was like said. Sass, the girl can hardly keep it down for longer than five months. Also, wouldn't you all test it for alcohol poisoning when we brought her in? Randy asked. The test is still processing. Now, when you found her, was there any indication of what might have caused this? Um... Well, Fireside like said, she wanted me to stay away from this little rock in her house. A rock? In a cloud house? I think they're strong enough to hold small rocks. I wanted to pick it up, but she told me not to, and then I brought her here. If possible, could you bring that rock by so I can have a better look at it? I'll send one of my orderlies with a hazardous material container if you like. Oh, that would be nice. But rocks just don't make ponies sick, Twilight said. There are a few, but they never work this fast. Believe me, we're all as confused about this as you are, the doctor said. What's even more unusual is that it happened to Rainbow Dash of all ponies. What's so weird about that? Besides her accident last spring, this is the second time she's actually checked into a hospital in her entire life. She's never broken any other bones, never gotten sick, never had any issues with her senses, never had any rashes, concussions, burns, deep cuts, you name it. She still hasn't had it. She's only lived with Ponyville for a few years. What about her time in Cloudsdale? I've already cross-referenced my records on Cloudsdale. It's the same thing. Rainbow Dash has only been admitted to any hospital once in her lifetime. She's either assistive over staying healthy, or there's more factors that I'm not aware of. There's a pause while the ponies collected her thoughts. Can we go see her? Fire said yes. I mean, if that's okay with you. The seeing hours are over, but I'll let you check in with her for a few minutes. The first thing Rainbow Dash was aware of was that she was lying in bed. It was stiff, and the sheets smelled funny, but it was a bed nonetheless. If she had her way, she would have remained immobile for as long as possible, but her nerves were not allowed that and forced her awake. She groaned and slowly opened up her eyes. She's waking up, a voice said. Rainbow Dash blinked and saw her friends circling around them, all of them looking with concern. Oh, hey guys. Rainbow Dash said, her voice harassed me for like a wire. Oh, Rainbow Dash, we were so worried you weren't going to get better. First I said, you are feeling better, right, darling? There he asked, looking in a little closer. Rainbow Dash coughed a little. <coughs> Not really. I feel really weak right now. The doctor said you'll recover in a day or two, so I said. That's nice. You guys will come to visit me if I had to stay here longer, right? Of course we're here. We will. We're your friends, and friends never abandon one another. 
And when you do get out, I'm gonna draw a massive rainbow dance as a going to die party. And if I use me, I'll use as as possible. Pinkie Pie said, you know, you can get the princesses to come. And then everybody will have lots of fun. And you'll be there and all happy stuff. Thanks. I like that. Rainbow Dash said to the little. Hey, it was okay with you guys. I'd like to get some sleep. Can we talk more when I'm feeling better? Of course. The earth began to leave before Twilight spoke again. Hey, Rainbow Dash, do you remember anything that happened last night? A little. Why? The doctors were having a little trouble trying to diagnose what was wrong with you. If you can remember what happened, that might help to treat you. Okay. Well, I came home at that tank. When I went into my room, I found this rock sitting on my bed. I thought it was some kind of meteor and wanted to keep it safe for later. But when I picked it up, I got sick. Just like that? I think so. There was a pause. I'll tell that to the doctors. I'll try to find out what kinds of elemental combinations can make a pony sick. Guess that egghead stuff is useful after all. Rainbow Dash started laughing before coughing again. Ugh, it hurts to laugh. Just rest for now. We'll come check up on you tomorrow. Rainbow Dash nodded and rolled on her bed. Her body was still weak, but her mind was alight with different questions. Did I do something wrong? Was I supposed to not pick up that meteor? Maybe I should have used tongs. Yeah, that's what you do with weird space objects and spice comic books. I think I need to read some of those in the meantime. Rainbow pulled the sheets of her bed a little closer, allowed herself to drift off to sleep. Unbeknownst to her, a certain rock began to glow bright green as it was brought to Ponyville's hospital. Chapter 3 Rainbow Dash was released from the hospital two days later. The doctors were still not entirely sure what had happened, so they had told her to eat light and not fly faster than 20 miles an hour for the first day. She was willing to accept both of those restrictions. Just as long as she was out of the hospital, and away from the rock that had started this whole thing. It seems like every pony in Ponyville knew about Rainbow Dash's condition. And for the next two days, every pony from Derby to the mayor stopped by to make sure Rainbow was okay. Scootaloo in particular had followed Rainbow Dash everywhere for the first day. The little pig said was terrified at the idea that her idol could have been killed. Rainbow Dash saw no problem with this, and even gave Scootaloo a few pointers of flying as a reward for her concern. Soon, the buzz died down and everything returned to normal. Had circumstances been different, Rainbow Dash probably would have tried to keep the buzz going. But for once, she was glad to have a bit of peace. Normalcy sounded like the best thing in the world right now, and she intended to let it last until she could get her strength back up and go back to being awesome. Rainbow Dash slowed down as she neared Sweet Apple Acres. She would have kept going at her normal speed, but the last time she had tried, she accidentally woke Grammy, Granny Smith up from her afternoon nap. Rainbow Dash had found that Cranky Granny Smith would be scarier than facing off against a dragon. She shuddered at the thought and landed near one of the fields. Hi, old stars. Rainbow turned and saw Applejack's older brother, Big Macintosh, walking up the path with a cart full of apples in tow. Rainbow Dash gave a smile and nod. Hey, Big Mac! Harvesting so good today? Yup. So play fantasy in ball tomorrow morning. If you're looking for Applejack, she's over in the south field. Okay, thanks, Big Mac. Rainbow Dash spread her wings and took off toward the south field. Although she often took naps in and around Sweet Apple Acres, she never liked the south field due to its proximity to the Everfree Forest. Despite being told by Applejack it was perfectly safe, the idea that a manticore or a pack of Timberwolves could be watching her at any given moment was not very appealing to Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash spotted Applejack. The orange er farm pony busy setting out on large buckets near some larger apple trees. The Pegasus altered her trajectory and slipped down through the trees, coming to a stop near one of the biggest apples on this part of the farm. Well, good to see you're up on the bio, Applejack said, picking up another bucket. Hey, like I like getting sick keep me from helping my friends. I don't know, just don't overwork yourself. Applejack placed the bucket down. Now, I want you to harvest these here apple trees while I go get more buckets. When you get hungry, try not to eat too many apples, okay? I'll try not to. Applejack nodded and walked off. Rainbow Dash turned and faced the nearest tree, looking for any worn spots where Applejack or Big Mac had been into the trunk. Once he did find the worn spots, she backed it up a bit, planted her forehoofs, and kicked it back with all the strength she could muster. There was a loud crack, and Rainbow Dash found her hind legs flailing in midair. To prevent herself from filing over, she quickly flapped her wings and righted herself. Confused and a bit more than spooked, 
I'm about to ask her to see exactly what had happened. Good news was that he had successfully knocked all the apples from the tree. Bad news was he also knocked all the leaves, branches from the tree as well. So he splintered the tree into eight large chunks and countless smaller ones. Several apples had been knocked to the air and were now raining down the Pegasus. On the bright side, all the smaller logs all bumped up into a nice little pyramid. How did that happen? She asked herself. She looked at her hind legs, the back to the tree. Applejack is not going to be happy when she comes back. There's got to be a way to fix this. Rainbow looked over the bits of the tree that were scattered around. She gathered the biggest pieces she could find and tried to fit them back into place. But there had been so much damage that her attempts to fix things only broke the larger chunks into smaller and smaller pieces. Gah! Where's Twilight when you need her? Rainbow Dash screamed after several minutes of failure. What's he need Twilight for? Rainbow Dash froze. Her eyes just shrunk to pinpoints and her face drooped so dangerously. On the gulp, she turned to face Applejack. <laughs> um, stuff? Applejack raised an eyebrow until she saw the remains of the tree. Her eyes widening in shock. Rainbow Dash? What the hell happened to my tree? Well, well, you see, I was just, I mean, I got all the apples down, but I didn't mean to. Your tree exploded. Applejack did not look amused. I exploded. Um, yeah, I but as hard as I could, it, it well, exploded. It's also exploded. Yeah! Rainbow Dash smiled, trying to convince Applejack she was being honest. Applejack sighed and placed a hoof against her forehead. Why, well, he said, like, whenever you come to help us, I, you get lazy and bark something. I wasn't being lazy! Rainbow Dash, you can't kick nearly as hard as my or Blank Mac. I know for a fact he cut while the trees explode. So, what happened? Did you try to get fancy with your rare pony skills to try to use the lightning? No, I kicked the tree and it exploded! Don't lie, Willie. I'm not lying. Would I ever lie to you? Yes. Okay, maybe that wasn't the best way to convince you. I'm not lying. But you have to believe me when I say I kicked your tree and it exploded. Yeah, I suppose Twilight summons demons for the Tyrus to do her laundry. She does? Of course not! Now tell me, what does he do to my tree? Remember Dessa's mouth twisted. She tried to come up with the best explanation possible. Well, she merely sighed and slumped over. Look, sorry I destroyed your tree. It was just an accident. And yeah, I did get a little lazy. I guess. Applejack looked at Rainbow Dash for a moment. Don't do any more stunts like that, okay, Rainbow? Just fans up here and we'll move on to the next grove. Okay. Rainbow Dash dropped the bits of the tree she was carrying and walked back to the next tree. To find where she was supposed to kick, she planted her hose again and reared back for a kick. Her body said constantly, trying to limit the amount of force she placed in her kick. There was a satisfying thud as her kick connected. Most of the apples in the tree dropped into nearby buckets. That's better. Maybe Twilight would know something about what had happened. After she finished harvesting with Applejack, Rainbow Dash flew over to the library. When she landed, she made note that all the curtains had been pulled, meaning Twilight was busy with some magic experiment, or reading one of those romance novels Rarity was always raving about, as if Twilight needs anything more to confuse her. She tried to push open the door. Twilight was standing in the center of the room, a pair of heavy-duty goggles over her eyes, and a notepad clutched in her magic. Her mane was slightly frizzled, but Rainbow guessed it was for the numerous pieces of equipment she had set up rather than stress. <laughs> Twilight had not noticed Rainbow Dash coming in. All her attention being focused on the equipment surrounding her in her notepad. And sitting in a claw-like contraption was a very familiar green rock. Twilight, are you insane?! The purple unicorn poster studies and looked at Rainbow Dash. What? Twilight asked. Is something wrong? Is there something wrong? That's what's wrong! Rainbow Dash stabbed a hoof at the rock. Don't worry, Rainbow. I cast enough dampening spells that we shouldn't be in danger. Well, okay. But still, why do you have that thing here? The hospital doesn't have the right staff or equipment to study this rock. So, they give it to me. It's actually quite amazing. The thing that almost killed me is amazing. I mean, scientifically, its structure is odd. It's more crystalline than it looks, but it doesn't refract to light like your standard crystal. If anything, it actually absorbs it, and it goes green every five minutes, but I can't figure out how or why. Because it's evil? Evil doesn't have anything to do with this. Why not? The Chainsley's use green magic, but the Flam use green magic, that thing also goes green. It has to be evil. So I looked at Rainbow Death with a blank stare. That violates so many laws of logic, I think you deserve an award. Are you calling me stupid? Not stupid, just confused. 
So I turned back to the rock. Was there anything else you wanted to talk to me about? Well, sort of. I kind of broke Applejack's trees today. Twilight Center, no pass. I looked at Rainbow Dash. Were you misusing lightning again? No, of course not. I just tried kicking it to harvest apples, and it exploded. Sort of. Twilight at Rainbow Dash for a moment, before pulling a book off the nearby shelf. Well, it's not an unusual phenomenon for some point to hit a tree wrong and cause damage. But, causing a tree to explode? That would take a kind of force very few points can muster without hurting themselves. Twilight flipped through the book. What's in the book? Oh, this is minerals that are fed on the common pony. See, there are a few types of rocks and metals that can supercharge the points eternal magic, increasing their strength and magical abilities significantly. What I think is that the rock might have been one of those types of materials, and you can hit the tree and release all that pent up energy. Is that bad? Supposedly, your eternal magic should have gone back to normal levels, but if it doesn't, then. then what? Then the magic will tear you from the inside out. Rainbow Dash's face and emotions dropped. So, I'm going to die? Don't say that. I said your eternal magic should be back to normal. You don't have to worry about it. But what if you're wrong and it's still supercharged? What's going to happen to me? I don't know. It happens so rarely in Pegasi and Earth ponies. If you were a unicorn, this would make more sense and you'd, well, most likely explode. EXPLODE! Yes, all that magic has to go somewhere and the only way it is out. Given how much energy you have stored up, you could be anything from a balloon popping to a side green boot size explosion. Rainbow Dash started sweating and pawing at the ground. C can you do something to stop it? It's beyond my casting reins. But you're the most powerful unicorn I know! Can you fight some kind of spell that will help? I'm sorry, Rainbow, but I don't think I can perform a spell like... Twilight was interrupted by Rainbow Dash grabbing her and pulling her closer. Please, Twilight, you have to do something. I don't want to die! Rainbow Dash! Calm down before you hurt yourself. Rainbow Dash let go. Twilight backed up. I'm sorry. But I just don't know any spells to siphon magic off of some pony. If anyone would know, it'd be probably Princess Celestia. But this was only a one-time event, like I said. And maybe the magic is depleted itself and you're back to normal. But what if you're wrong? Then you should go see Princess Celestia, and maybe she'll be able to help you. But if you do, make sure to bring this. Twilight nodded towards the rock with you. What, so the princess could blow up too? Princess Celestia is immune to that sort of thing. Now, go home and get some rest. You got yourself worked over this, and you're only making things worse. Okay, but when should I go see the princess? If anything else happens to you that you think is not normal, come see me, and I'll tell her you're coming. Rainbow Dash woke up from her in the afternoon nap and stretched. Her conversation with Twilight the previous day was still riding around her head. The idea of her body overloading and exploding, a haunting shadow she did not want to face. She tried to ignore it but it still crept into her thoughts whenever she at least expected. She shook her head and looked around. Not wanting to break any more trees, Rainbow Dash had flown back to her house to take a nap. The room was fairly dark, even for the afternoon. She flipped on a few lights in order to see better. Tank was snapping in his favorite corner, a few happy and leaves sitting in front of him. Rainbow Dash sighed and got out of bed and picked up the smaller bits of plant matter, treading carefully so as not to waken the sleeping tortoise. When that was done, she walked outside and looked towards Ponyfield. Rarity and Fluttershy should be back from their spa trip. Maybe I should go see what they're up to. Rainbow Dash took a few moments before takeoff to check the weather. There was a breeze coming in from Canterlot. Rainbow Dash prepared herself in case she had to fight the crosswinds. Rainbow Dash spread her wings and shot forward. The Pegasus racing across the sky with unprecedented speed. While she enjoyed the speed boost, she noticed a few things that were off. Normally when she reached speeds like this, her eyes would start watering, and her forelegs would become stiff and unresponsive. She only achieved speeds like this when ever dry diving. Now she was flying straight. Her arms felt fine so you could see clearly. Twilight was wrong. I was still getting offended by whatever that rock did to me. Rainbow Dash pulled up and stopped flying in order to prevent herself from panicking. She was in the Sarah Pawneyville, and several other ponies had noticed her sudden arrival and were looking at her. She agreed to continue walking. Keeping her head down, she did not want to look directly at any pony. She continued like this until she heard a familiar buzzing sound. A buzzing sound drawing closer. Hey, Rainbow Dash! Scootless says he pulled up next to her idol. Hey, Scoots! That's a death by magical overload. We see it in the back of Rainbow Dash's mind. She gave the younger pony a smile. What's up? 
Well, me and the Apple Boy wanted to do key marker say your cook tires, but then Sleepy Bell got hungry and he sent me to Circuit Q Corner to get some snacks. Then I saw you coming into town and I wanted to see what you were up to, and here I am, so... School lanes a little closer to Rainbow Dash. What are you up to? Not much of anything, really. I was going to see what Rarity and Flareshad were doing. But since you're here, I don't see why I can't hang out with you and help you out with some of those snacks. Skooloo's face lit up with excitement. Really? You do that? <laughs> when I ever leave my biggest fan waiting? Spits of quality time before, with her before I die. Her thoughts were interrupted by two orange hoes wrapping around her neck. This is so awesome! I get to hang out with Rainbow Dash! Rainbow Dash chuckled and two began walking, or as Skooloo's case, riding towards her cute corner. You know, you gotta remind me myself when I was a filly, Rainbow Dash said. I do? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Rolling Thunder? Uh, a little. He was a Wonderbolt, right? The Thunder of uh, the Wonderbolts, actually. My mom lived next door to him when she was young. She used to tell me all these stories of all these cool things she did. That's actually what got me into trying out for the Wonderbolts. Wow. Did you ever, you know, meet him? Well, once, the center got a key mark. My mom thought it would be sure to introduce me to some of the Wonderbolts and maybe pick up a couple of pointers from them. And then there was Rolling Thunder. He retired by then, but he was still, well, Rolling Thunder. Was he cool? Actually, I don't remember. I fainted when he asked me what my name was. School was stopped with the Rainbow Dash. You fainted. Hey, it wasn't my fault. The guy was like me and Princess Celestia combined. And I was eight at the time. I guess I got so excited my brain got fright or something. Kind of like when we first met. Oh, yeah. There's a pause. Sorry if you thought I was lame when I fainted. Lame? You're the second coolest pony in Ponyville. You're, I never think you're lame. This guy smiled from the other pony. Thanks. No problem. Let's still continue on. So, after cook diving, are you going to try out for next week, Kitty Marks? Well, Applebaum said something about sprinting. Hey, sprinting's actually kind of fun. I don't do it that much since I fly all the time. But I think you three could be good at it. Well, we were going to ask Applejack if she could use that running attack she has. Or well, that big storm, I don't think will. Scooter will stop talking. The Polish girl will stop. Oh, why do they always have to show up whenever I go to Sugar Cube Corner? Who? Rainbow Dash went towards the bakery and saw two fillies standing near the entrance. The first one was wearing a pair of sandal bags. was a magenta pony with a purple and white mane, complete with a small tiara. Why am I hearing the Imperial March? The second was a gray pony with pigtails and blue rimmed glasses. There we go. There, there's the Imperial March. Don't tell me you're scared of them. No, of course not. It's just... Every time I come here, she's like Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are just waiting for me so they can mock me and call me Blank Flank. I know what that's like. Every pony used to call me Rainbow Crass. Let's try to ignore them and they'll... Wait. Rainbow Dash squinted. There seemed to be something wrong with Diamond Tiara saddlebags. So Rainbow Dash squinted hard to see exactly what the problem was. She saw a notebook, but that was not what was wrong. Wait here. You're not going to... I said, wait here. School of Mewing 9, right? Rainbow Dash went over to the two fillies. Hey, Diamond Tiara. Oh, look, Silver Spoon. It's Rainbow Dash, the blank, blank lover. Diamond Tiara smiled smugly. Come to protect your precious little blank, blank. That doesn't matter right now. How did you get a whole Tiara Leaf notebook? Diamond Tiara's gaze shifted to one surprise, while Silver Spoon eyed her friend nervously. Diamond, you did... Did you? The great pony asked. David Tiara ignored her. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me. I'm not. What is this? Like, some stupid plan to try and get me into trouble? No. Now give me the book. Or what? You go tell? Because I'm sure I'll go over it well. Who do you think my dad will believe? You, the mayor who almost flooded our house in the store last month, or me? Diamond Tiara smuggled with return. A rainbow dash has some pretty ass to tackle the filly, forcefully removed that smile. That wouldn't solve anything. But funny Terry might. Smiling, Rainbow Dash lunged forward, grabbed Diamond Tiara by her forelegs, and took off, leaving a sock scooter loose silver spoon behind. Once airborne, she turned south and flew towards Terry Lee's house, while Diamond Tiara struggled to free herself. You let me go! Are you insane? The filly screamed over the wind. Neil just doing what was right. My dad will hear about this. He'll see that you get fired from the weather team. I'd like to see him try. Terry Lee's house was close to the school, and his lavender paint job made it a bit easier to spot from above. 
Charlie was outside tending a small collection of daisies. Her back turned to the approaching ponies. Rainbow Dash struck down the sky and landed outside the fence before dropping Diamond Tiara unceremoniously on the ground. Hey, Charlie! Hello, Rainbow Dash, the school teacher said, turning to face Rainbow. How nice of you to drop in. She frowned when she saw Diamond Tiara. Rainbow Dash, what are you doing with one of my students? It was terrible! Diamond Tiara began. I was just walking home from Super Cute Corner when this man there came and dragged me over here. She didn't even say to me why. Quiet, you! Rainbow Dash went to Charlie. She stole your notebook, and I brought her here so she could fit back. I didn't steal any notebook, Miss Shirley. She's trying to get me into trouble. Rainbow Dash, my notebook is back at my desk at the school. There's no way she could have taken it. Really? Rainbow Dash pulled Diamond Diara's saddlebags off and pulled, turned them over, spilling contents on the ground. Last thing to fall out was a dark colored book with three smiling flowers on the cover. Then I suppose she just happens to have a book that has your cutie mark on it. Charlie and Diamond Tiara stared in shock at the book while Rainbow Dash struggled not to smile. Diamond Tiara, Charlie said, what do you have to say for yourself? I hear, uh, how do you know she didn't plant this on me, huh? She could be trying to frame me. Why would she frame you? Well, because, well, Diamond Tiara, you, your father, and I are going to have a long discussion about stealing things. After which, you'll have to test for next month. But, it's Charlie. No buts. Now go gather your things. You and I are going to find your father. Diamond Tiara looked like she would continue complaining, but really grumbled and began to pick up her things. Charlie looked at Rainbow Dash. Thanks for that, Rainbow Dash. How did you know she had my notebook? It was nothing, really. I just looked through the bag and saw it. Wait. I looked through the bag? Is something the matter? Rainbow Dash backed up. Yes, something's wrong with me. Every dash turned and took off, chasing the rice towards Twilight's library. I gotta see the princess now, or else everybody else is gonna get hurt!